I mentioned in my previous video about testing uh, supercapacitors with a constant current load. And I want to share real quick the custom little rig that I made up so I can test supercapacitors or batteries or anything else like that. So let's get down to the bench and I'll show you exactly how and why I set this up the way I did. Okay, so I got two of these units that I actually bought for, what was it, $17 or $18 off of eBay. They are a constant current load, ran from 12 volts DC, and they can go from normally 200 milliamps to 9.99 amps, basically 10 amps. So 200 milliamps to 10 amps. They have a nice little metal rotary encoder with a push button start. Actually, it's probably easier to show you on this one. Get the wires out of the way. And we'll power it up in a second. Basically, the reason why I got two is so I can test two at a time and not take 10 days testing supercapacitors. So, I also modified one of these. This is the modified one. Instead of being 200 milliamps to 10 amps, this one is now 20 milliamps to 999 milliamps, or 1 amp. It has better resolution but lower amount of current. And all I did was replace the factory current sense loop with a 0 0.1 ohm 3 watt resistor, current sense resistor. That's all you had to do and it automatically changes it on over except for the decimal point. You'll see that in a second. And they both run on 12 volts and a half an amp. So I went to the flea market and found for three dollars a old Linksys power adapter that puts out 12 volts and one amp. So this way I can power both of them at the same time. As you can tell I get spliced the wire right in from another one. So let's give it some power. Turn them on. <clears throat> they go through a self-test and you hear the fans kick on real quick. Now this is only going to be a quick review. I'm not going to go into the really depth of how to work them. People have done plenty of videos on these already. But as you can tell, uh, don't mind the flicker. They're not actually flickering. That's just a refresh rate of my camera. But right now, I have it set for the low voltage of 0.1 volt on both of them. And let's bring this back down. 20 milliamps. And this one is at 200 milliamps. So let's match it up. And the reason why, you have to move the decimal point over one when on this modified one. So this is actually... 200 milliamps, not 2 amps. So let's connect a supercapacitor to each side. And speaking of which, you can either do two wire connection off to the side here, or positive and negative for your load, or you can do a four wire Kelvin connection. And you run thinner wire, so this way it actually gets the voltage from this and runs all the current, and it gets more accurate. So I made my own custom Kelvin connections with an alligator clip, a thick wire going for the actual current load, and a thin wire going over for the voltage check. And real easy, positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. Now let's do the other side here. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Okay, so now I'm all set up. This one's set for 20, uh, 200 milliamps, and this one's set for 200 milliamps as well. So we're going to start them up, just hit the button, and then they both run. And this way I can actually get the capacity on these. So I'm going to let this run for a few minutes and just let you see how it works. So it gives you the voltage on each one, 2.63, 2.62. Now these you got to move on over a little bit more. Wherever the decimal point is, like on amp hour, move that decimal point off. So the decimal point is actually over here now. So when it gets to amp hours again, it's not two hundredths of a two hundredths of a uh, amp hour. It's two thousandths of an amp hour. Because you'll see two thousandths of an amp hour over here. Now let's kick them both up to one amp. That's one amp there. This one you crank all the way up. And you get 999. 
There we go. And that's set at one amp. So now they have both a one amp draw. And you'll see this one counting a lot faster because it thinks it's pulling 10 amps, but it's not really. Remember, you gotta move the decimal point over. So if anything, you have more precision. You can see this one's counting much slower because you don't have that thousandths place that this now technically has a thousandths place. Now I mounted these uh, opposite to each other, so this way the wires would come out on both sides so it can attach to either a battery or supercapacitor. And I can have both of the powers run in the center where I don't have to worry about interference. And this way the fans don't, they blow a different direction as well too. And I mounted on just a piece of quarter inch acrylic just to keep both of them together. Okay, this one's going to cut out in a second. 1.01 volts. one cut up there we go now it's actually blinking this one's cut out this one's at 1.3 volts so it's coming up real soon okay this one just stopped now as well so now they're both actually blinking and you can see the three dashes here on each one just hit the run button once it tells it to stop blinking and now we can go back and forth with the dials and see exactly where we're at so we can see here, this tells you the voltage drop that it did. It dropped 1.78 volts on this supercapacitor, and it dropped 1.81 volts on this supercapacitor. We go to second setting for amp hours. Here's where it gets a little interesting. This one reads 0.157 amp hours. Now, normally you would think this has 1.9. No, move the decimal over one. This has 0 0.1910 amp hours. So, we've actually increased the... Um, Accuracy or give, it's given us a thousandths place now as well. Actually, wait, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths place actually. Yeah, and same deal with watt hours. If we go down to watt hours, this one had 0 0.280 watt hours, this one had 0.3475 watt hours. So that's how I use my constant current loads. At least that's the original reason I bought them, was so I can test supercapacitors and select which ones are really good and which ones are junk since you really can't tell it's not a standard battery so it's easiest to do a constant current drain on them 